If you're new here, welcome and thanks for joining our crew. Here's the quick rundown. I'm Christina and this is John. Sick of COVID lockdowns, I quit my job, packed up our Melbourne apartment and with little sailing experience, we purchased our first yacht, Takana. Our dream is to sail Takana all the way up to Australia's Ocean Jewel, the Great Barrier Reef. We've made it sort of halfway there. We're currently in Coffs Harbour, where things are about to get weird. The day started like any other day. <sighs> but this was no ordinary day. I did pan, pan, pan first and got no response. John and I were just chilling at the marina in Coffs Harbour. It's mine. Sounds good. Next minute. Hey John, Marine Rescue Coffs Harbour responding to a 47 foot Bavaria that has been dismasted. Two people on board. That's not far away from here, hey? About an hour or two later, we looked up and a severely damaged vessel pulled up next to us. John. Can you tell me what's just happened? We saw Cebu pulling up next to us, helped it with its lines and realised it had been in a significant incident. And on board behind the helm was Peter. Hello. He was in shock, but after a couple of days, he sat down with us and told us his story. No warning, bang. Summertime, summertime. Loves and is proud. But to get the full scope of this really quite freaky story, we have to go back, way back. Now, this was John and I on the same boat, Cebu, three months prior. She was a beauty, a Bavaria Ocean 47, up for sale and on our short list of boats to inspect. Now, we saw the ad online. We called the owner, we flew to Brisbane and even took this footage as we did a walkthrough of it in Brisbane. But as it turned out, the boat just wasn't for us and we moved on and we later purchased Takana. But for Peter, Cebu was his dream boat that he'd been searching for for years. I mean, he just moved on from his marriage and he planned to charter the yacht in Thailand. Yeah, it's my dream to travel and it's my home. Peter had only owned Cebu for a few weeks. He was so excited to sail her from Brisbane to his hometown in Sydney. The biggest thing that shattered me was I've only had the boat three, three weeks. <laughs> and then this oh, the fan. His rigging just gave way. I had 50% of 140% Genoa out and third reef on the main. So well within the boat, well within me. No warning, my mate was laying on the on the couch because he was crook yeah. <laughs> and he had his head probably that far away from it when it let go and no warning, bang! Yeah. And I just turned around I just saw this going like that, go on. Yeah. I saw it, the mask go over the side and uh, everything stopped. Had no choice but to cut it loose. What did you think in that moment? <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's frightening, it's oh. frightening. Of all the berths at Coffs Harbour Marina, it was just incredible that Peter was allocated a spot right next to us. We were in shock. What are the chances that it's pulled up right next to us? John actually tried to alert the previous owner of the boat. I'm just messaging the, owner, the old owner of Cebu. Obviously we had his phone number from when we were dealing with him, but we later found out, sadly, he had since passed away. What actually happened was the threaded bolt that goes down into the chain plate where the threaded bar goes through the chain plate, it actually snapped. So, and that was caused from water leakage, even though it was stainless, it's still corroded. So it's pulled the, the rod straight out through the top of the deck. So I've got a big hole in the deck now, pulled the window out. Yeah. Massive amount of damage. How did you go? You hear these stories of people when this happens, having like real difficulties getting rid of the rig. I was lucky. I was, I was lucky. Um, in hindsight, I will buy a decent set of bolt cutters. That is a must. I was lucky enough to pull the pins out. I was lucky enough to use bare pliers. Never bend your split pins around. 
all the way. Mm. You just have to open them up. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. open them up. They won't come out. It's funny, our riggers did the same thing. In this instance, they were done correctly, and all I did was put the pliers on, crimped it up, pulled it out, and knocked the pin back out with a pin punch yeah. and a hammer. And, and what would have happened fine. if you couldn't oh, yeah. have got them out? I probably would have held the boat. The bottom of the mast yeah, it was, was bobbing it was... up, and I was in a two meter swell, and it was rolling, and it was coming up and hitting the gunnels. Oh. Um, so it was a, a, a high risk of it punching a hole through the side of the hull. So How long did it take to clear the mast and everything? This right side, that went, and then I had the forestay, uh, the two forestays on the Genoa and the staysail. They were laying over, everything was laying over. They came out pretty easy, and the only one I had hassle was was on the port side where it went over, okay. where it bent the rods over, oh, and right. I had a really hard time punching the pin out. Yeah. So, and in the rolling swell, I got no guardrail, so I had no really. place to put my feet. So I was in between swells. When it comes back up, I was having a go and then having to hang on. Oh, so yeah, yeah it's, you just deal with it. Yeah. You, you don't have a choice. And so. when you let go of that last pin, it all just sort of went. It was gone, and so was dollars. Yeah. Oh. It would have been a relief though, don't you? <laughs> yeah. yes, it I went, oh my god, it's gone. <laughs> yeah. Shit, it's gone. Did it make a hole in the hole? No. Yeah. No. Just where it ripped out the rod out, out of the upper deck. That's it. Do you ever think as well, like, where I'm pretty lucky that I've walked away and my mate walked away yes. unscathed? Like, was yeah. there a chance there that you could have been injured? Oh, yeah. Um, the, boom, the boom was crushing on the bin of me. I was lucky that the bin of me is. Uh, the stainless is 25 mil stainless, so it, it's, it it's good off. solid stainless, and that kept the, the boom off, um, so I could have some control, get to the controls, and and but that collapsed down and was getting lower and lower with every swell. Oh yeah. It was getting lower and lower, and, and uh, we're just lucky that no one got hurt. Thought I might lose some fingers. Yeah. <laughs> Did you really? Mm hmm getting the pins out and stuff. So as the boat rolled and rocked, it was knuckling over. The knuckles were going over and over, so. Because you did all this before rescue teams even got to you as well. I, never, I, I turned around. I turned the rescue teams around. Oh, really? They, yeah. the, the quickest they could have got was an hour and a half. Mm. But I did send out a mayday. Mm. So. Oh, did you? Mm. Was that your first mayday ever? Yeah, I did pan, pan, pan first and got no response. So I did, did a mayday and uh, also called them on the, on the telephone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what, uh, did you, what did you say? You're like, hi. I, 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 look, I just looked up Google, um, Marine Rescue Coffs Harbour. Hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hello, this is Sabu. <laughs> I've just been to mustard. Can you come out? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. And then everything kicked in. What a story. Uh, yeah, that's in the end of the... Live to tell. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and the best thing about it, I suppose, was that it's insured. I'm sure yes. a lot of people would be. Please, people, insure <laughs> your boat. Yeah. 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 And ending on a positive, um, people might be able to look out for you soon in Thailand or in Sydney, <laughs> which will be exciting. Yeah, yeah, it'll be pretty cool. Still. Cool. Yeah. That's awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, Peter, for telling your story. <laughs> Despite everything Peter had been through, he insisted on getting up early the next day to help us with our lines. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we are about to leave Coffs Harbour and head to the Gold Coast. It's going to be a 24 hour sail. Did you sleep well? I sleep well. How'd you go, babe? Good. That's good. Are you no. ready to rock and roll? Sure am. While we were stuck here in Coffs Harbour due to COVID restrictions, we were grateful for the people we had met here. The Coffs Harbour Marina has lent us their manual ute. We haven't driven a car in a while. We were able to get a heap of boat jobs done and our fridges were finally full of nourishing foods for our next passage. I was just wondering if we could log on with you guys, please. There was just one last thing to do. And that was to say goodbye to our new friend, Peter, who blasted his sound system with a farewell tune as we were leaving the marina. He was even looking out for us, screaming out, Fenders! Thanks, Pete. We ended up spending 10 
10 days in Coffs Harbour, obviously because um, we weren't able to get into Queensland um, until we'd spent 14 days outside of Sydney. So that is what we did. And now we have this 24 hour sail to the Gold Coast. Coming up next. Yes. We were in for a long and emotional night. Make sure you hit that subscribe button to join our adventure north. And we'll go through the heads at around 6 a.m. in the morning. I guess we sort of felt like a bit of a, like a connection to Cebu because we oh, had yeah. seen yeah. it. Yeah. You know, like we'd been on board and we... It's a small world. Yeah.